Hello. Today I will speak about illusory nature of the reality. All right. So you are an illusion. I am an illusion, right? And we dream the same dream. How do we know that it is a dream? I can jump on the earth and it's sort of uh, sturdy, right? And you can jump, you know, go ahead and jump. Like, you can feel your head. It's pretty solid and, you know, it's not an illusion, right? And you can bite, bite your lip a little, like, it's it's painful. So the physical part is pretty sturdy and reproducible. And it's very reproducible. In science, some things are very poorly re reproducible, but in physical mechanical things, you can drop the ball how many times you want. It will always fall on the floor. A very rep gravity is very reproducible down here. So what is so illusionary? Illusory. What is so illusory about it? Hmm. I will start with Reiki. Yeah, that's my personal experience, and it was. It was a daily reminder that there is something in your hands, something in your energy flow, which is not mechanical. And it's not even electric. Should they define electricity? De electricity is something which is measurable with uh, human devices. And if it's not measurable, it is something else. So that is what I call etheric, et etheric. And many scientists, many alternative science call it the etheric field or the field. Some some call it energy, right? So the field, the energy, that yeah, biological energy. Which cannot be deduced to mechanical things. Right. So Reiki does miracles. And you feel subtle energies in your hands. And these energies are... These energies are independent on you. They're part of unconscious, subconscious, outside of your control. And you feel these energies. So when you work with, the, with other people, People, you feel the, the, their energies, and these energies are not measurable by electric devices, field meters. No. So these are beyond, beyond the physical. Then there are synchronicities. And some synchronicities are pretty trivial, like um, when you're in a good state, when um, you are coherent, coherent meaning you are in harmony, yeah, coherent and, coherence and harmony is about the same thing. So you are in harmony with the world, then you get 11-11 in... Uh, on clock, in your emails, on your messages, in your visual field and numbers which are surrounding you. And then you get messages from from the universe. And some of them are very meaningful. So they come to you from random places, like you're driving and you see a random writing or title which corresponds exactly to what you're thinking. So you just realize your thinking, inner thought, which shouldn't be visible to anyone, 
is revealed to you back by the universe, by the matrix, in words and messages. And the messages which are given to you by strangers or people who don't, who are not supposed to know what you are thinking, but these messages reflect to you back. Your inner thoughts, your, your mind, your thoughts. The voice which speaks within you starts speaking from outside of you to you. And of course there is astral travel, prophetic dreams, prophetic dreams, out-of-body experiences, and near-death experiences. And there are outright miracles like people living without food, and resurrection of, of dead, miraculous healings, and miracles and miraculous help which you get in critical situations, like near-death situations, very dangerous accidents, when you were supposed to die and miraculously you were, you were saved. And of course there is a miracle of love. When the energy comes to you, which cannot be explained by normal routine, energy comes from inside, from the other dimension. So this, as, these oscillations of energy, these waves of good feeling or bad feeling, highs and lows, they cannot be explained by normal predictions, normal explanations. Like the weather around you doesn't change, your thoughts don't change, but something in the matrix, something in the environment changes and, and you feel very different. So the ability to feel empathy is also another illustration of the illusory nature of the reality. And of course the messages, channeling, psychic messages. There is a way of transcending it. Many ways of transcending it, many ways of transcending the limitations. Intuition is one of the proofs of the illusory nature of the reality. So in channeling messages we get, we get explanations, how it is all set up, how it is all maintained. And ancient teachings, especially Hinduistic teachings about their nature of the creation, yes. Numerology, by the way, I'm the last one to accept numerology, but there is something, and sacred geometry, yes, there is something in this reality which reveals its artificial nature, and numerology is one of those. It's really hard to catch it, prove that it is there, but there are things here and there which are mysteriously connected, mysteriously revealing the digital nature of this reality or the role of, of course it's not only digital, it's a combination of waves and numbers, yes, symbols and waves. It's a combination of symbols and waves. Recently I heard that the Earth is especially rich in symbols, while some other planets, like Mars, is more into a wave nature of the reality. So, wave versus particle, in, on Earth it is more particle, more symbolic than waves. So how is it all combined? How is the reproducible illusion of solidity, yeah, solidity, hardness, reproducibility of the reality. How do you combine the reality and illusion in the same understanding? How do you combine this duality into, 
into a harmony. So one of the main laws of this reality is that it protects itself. It gives you, it goes out of its way to prove to you that it is real. You think you catch it, you think you discover a miracle and then if you start investigating it, this miracle, it disappears, it just dissolves. There is a lot of explanations why this miracle was actually not a miracle, but it was a, a natural thing. Yeah, a, it was real. It was real, not a miracle. Not a real miracle, but it was trivial. Yeah, trivial. So that's why skeptics are so successful often in disproving the miracles. So it is all about faith and uh, the point of view. If you are allowing a miracle to exist, if you are happy to see the miracle, if you are trusting it, if you are trusting their spiritual side of the reality, you are gifted then a lot of miracles, a lot of help. You attract, but the faith attracts more miracles, more of confirmations, more of gifts. And the skepticism attracts more of disproofs dissolution of miracles, of triviality, yes. It is about being pure, light attracting light, and dark attracting dark, yes. So in the past you would compare the reality to a theatric play, a book, a novel, having its own laws. Now a better illustration would be a movie, right? And a computer game. I wonder what stands behind on the other side. Is it automatic or is it conscious? When the miracles happen, is it because somebody conscious is giving them to us? Like God, God's avatars, God's messengers, spirits. Or is it automatic? Is it just the property, the natural property of the reality that it gives us miracles? I don't know. I think it's always, it is often both. Yeah, so often it is both. It's easier for them to help us from other side when we are open to that help, inviting that help, and meet it with appreciation. So let's do a bit of prayer. Chanting is great, right? The simplest chant is just any sound. It is what you put in the sound what matters. So make any sound and intend it to be a prayer, intend it to be a chant. It's the easiest, because I don't have to think, it's natural. So, ha, um, right? Of course, some sounds sound a bit more divine than others, so use your preferences. But I experimented with it and discovered that usually people pull out the sounds, the melodies from their childhood. Not all of them, but some of them are more imprinted in our soul. So it doesn't have to be alien to us. The prayer, the mantra, the chant doesn't have to be alien from, to us. It's, it's coming from inside. It's coming from childhood imprint so play with your sound and discover within yourself what is 
your inner child. It, it might have been given, gifted to you by your mother, father, parents, grandfathers, grandmothers, your family. There is a story that in, there is enough African tribe where a mother comes up with a chant before conception. And that this chant, which, which is very simplistic, is given to a child and carries through the life, carries the, the life through the life. And uh, this chant is sent by the tribe when the person dies. So there is something which is very intrinsic to you. And as usual, the choices, yes, you can, you can choose. You don't have to discover it. It might be just chosen. So you can choose the chant, a chant, the chant which is yours. And of course, as you evolve, the chant might evolve. I let it, I let myself chant and usually I, my chant evolves around the same child chant over and over, and I just feel happy. It feels natural for me. So discover yours. Give yourself a freedom to make any sounds, and if they sound familiar, don't discard them. Familiar is fine as well. And of course, the lessons, right? So this reality is given to us to make cho choices and learn lessons. So allow yourself to make choice, choices, to choose. And don't worry as much about what you choose. The experience of choosing is as, as important, as important or even more important than the result of the choice. And if a choice is obvious, it's, it's easy, but hardest are the choices when there is no choice or where the choices are, options are equally unacceptable. Now, the time is great, a great part of this illusion, of this experience. The time is absolutely essential. So, space-time is united space and time matter and time and that energy and time waves and time you see many waves here are waves in time right of course there are static waves right like waves in the hair they're static or on the fabric the waves in the fabric are static they don't move in time but many waves huge number of waves huge many types of waves like light sound they are only existing because of the illusion of time mantra is unfolded in time my speech any speech is unfolded in time except the speech in the book which is exists all in the book at once but you unfold you read it by unfolded in time except those cases when you swallow the book all at once like Supernaturally, mysteriously. So the nature of time is important here. And the choices are also made under time pressure. You would make cho many choices, many, many choices you would avoid, many painful choices you would avoid unless there was a time pressure. So time is used here for both Obtaining the lessons, learning the lessons, and for, of course, for mind control, for even for pain. Pain is also something which, yeah, birth, life, pain, pleasure, death, resurrection, all of that is unfolding in time, with time. So next time you feel pain, think about time. Time is healing, time is, time is killing. Time is dragging us through their experiences, but also it has 
also wave properties. It is wavy. Sometimes it runs, sometimes it's slow. And there is a, a dance between your consciousness and time, your focus on, of attention and time. Sometimes you are here and now, in this time, in this space, in this body. But more often you are not here, not now, you are in the future, in the past, anywhere except here. Especially when you are in pain, you don't want to face the, to face the pain, you are elsewhere. And the pain is sometimes, not always, sometimes a focusing mechanism which brings you back to here and now. To the place and time, to the body, place and time where you are. So realize that you are co-creating this dance with time and as Bashar says, you're co-creating time. I discovered that it is true in those simple circumstances. When you are late and you're trying to squeeze more into existing time, so you have like 12 minutes and you can wait simply or you can do something else or you can think about something instant and interesting in these 12 minutes. So I realized when you do something important, when you squeeze more time, more accomplishments in these 12 minutes, the 12 minutes run out of faster. Let me give you an example because you might not, might be confused here what I'm trying to con con convey. Say you're driving, right? And you need to get somewhere in time and you're late. So you need to get somewhere in 12 minutes. If you just relax and just allow yourself to drive and not to get distracted, you might get there in time, more likely to get there in time. If you, at the same moment, you say, I have 12 minutes and now let me talk on the phone or let me think about something smart, something uh, involved, then by some miracle, the 12 minutes run short because at that, as you think about interesting things, as you um, I engage in other, finish in other things like, doing things, then the time runs out faster. Which is kind of inconvenient, very inconvenient. Like, especially for those of, of us who grew up in faster, fast cities, in big cities and capitals of the world, uh, we are used to rush things. We are used to squeeze out of time as much accomplishment as possible. So, you just realize that the more you try to do, the, the, the faster the time runs. And the older you get. It's not absolute. It is relative. It is just an experience. But it is an interesting experience that proves to me that time is also... Mm, depends on what we think. Everything depends on what we think. So by... Controlling and by... Being aware of your thoughts... Yeah, by being aware of your thoughts and being aware of those um, dependencies, you might be able to work better with uh, with uh, with time. With um, how do you call it? With the with the dimension of time. So by being aware that you co-create time, you might work better with the dimension of time. So on the other side of the creation, on the invisible side of the creation, there is, there are many consciousnesses. There is a consciousness of the creator and helpers, which are all representing creator, the, the reflections of creator, fragments, facets, facets of the creator. It's all one creation reflecting on itself. But in any way, there are angelics, and angelics are cool. They are the messengers of God responsible for maintaining the, this illusion, maintaining this matrix and the system, and they are very good in rebooting it and healing it using their, their special powers. They have very unique powers. They understand what is happening down here below and they can fix things. On one hand, you know, they're 
the heart is hard, the reality is tangible, solid. On the other hand, it is an illusion. A very perfectly, a perfectly induced illusion, a well-maintained illusion. But there are many ways around of it, many ways around especially where the random things are involved. So what is random to us is under full control of the consciousnesses on the other side. So you're in control of non-random things, but you're naturally used to things happening at random. Say the, the weather changes at random, the luck changes at random, uh, connections to people, between people change at random. And that is under the full control, conscious control of the consciousness outer, outside, which are, as I mentioned, creator, angelics, elementals, human spirits, alien spirits, and um, different aspects of the creator, male, female, and so on. So if you pray already, I, if you are praying already, you don't have to change anything. If you are not praying yet, I invite you to start praying as a way to, to progress, as a way to learn, as a way to harmonize yourself with the reality, which is an illusion. So to harmonize yourself with this reality, which is a dream. And a good way to pray is to start with the gratitude, address it to a specific consciousness, consciousness outside of this world, express your invitation for certain help, and end up with a gratitude. Sometimes when I'm desperate, I invite all helpers. I recruit, invite everybody I could remember, especially I start with the ancestors who I remember and those who I don't remember all together. Ancestral help is very real, very... <laughs> the world real is not, not working anymore. Very powerful in, um, in prayers. It's a very powerful spiritual force. It's, it's within your design. One of the strongest part that form your many bodies and energy flows is the ancestral part. You invite the creator, the God, the male or female aspect of it, all, all of them together. You invite the angelics, ascended masters, specific ascended masters elementals, your spirit guides, your spirit helpers, and the specific spirits you like. But one in a time is better. And you can feel, feel which, uh, which the invitation would work best for you. I'm very I like very much to ask, to ask for help of the Divine Mother, meaning the, the universe, the divine aspect, the female aspect of the universe, feminine aspect of the universe. But in some occasions you might invite Grindel, if you need some rough, strong and will and skillful help. Yeah, Grinnell would be great. And sometimes it could be an open invitation. My usual formula for health is I invite all my healers to help. So one thing is um, one thing to consider is to consider quantum properties of the world. What works for quantum particles, 
quantum particles also works for for life. And one of those is uncertainty principle, the uncertainty principle. And this principle is very simple. Things are uncertain until you pay attention to them. Th things are uncertain, undefined, they don't exist, they are not formed in the matrix until cons a consciousness looks at them, a conscious being looks at them. Say, if it is not a conscious being, if it is an automation, if it is a, a robot without consciousness, very simple, automate. Uh, and if it photographs something, what it photographed, it's not defined until a conscious being is looking at that. Like the security camera, what it fixed, what it recorded, that is not defined until a conscious being is, has looked at it. So what I am recording here can be different for every one of you. It is a concept which is hard to grasp, but I guess you just can use many things which, which is hard to grasp, you can get, get used to them anyway. So what, I'm, what I wanted to do, what I want to do, what I intend to do is to give you a healing and a blessing and it would be an individual healing for you and it would be different for every person out there unless of course you compare your notes which I suggest you don't then you would have individualized healing if you compare your notes then by some supernatural law it would uh, what I'm saying will become the same thing at least you would look at different angles, but it would be the same. But, but I intended to be different for every one of you. So for your specific healing, I will give you a, a mantra and a prayer and invitation. All right. Amayan Hanno, Mayan Hanno, Repeat after me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, the universe. Thank you, the creator. Thank you for the gift of this life. Thank you for the gift of this experience. Om ma 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 ha na ha na ha na ha na ha na ho ma ha Om ma ma ha na ha ra ma ha na ho ma Om ma ha na ha na ya ha ya ha na ma ha Om ra ha na ya ma ma ha I invite healing for my body. I invite healing for my soul. I invite healing for my business. I invite healing for my finances. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your help. Oh, Repeat after me. Thank you, Mama. Help me, help me, help me. Thank you. Om Mama Mahana Hana 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 
The transmission is closed. Be well. Goodbye.